Hello, Sagittarius viewers. Sorry, it's been a while, but I am back now. So I'm going to see what's going on with you guys. Um, this could be an ex. This could be a new partner. Uh, someone coming in in the near future. Um, keep in mind, it's, it's either your energy group or it isn't. Um, don't try to make it fit if it doesn't resonate. But for this energy group, let's see what's going on with you guys. We have manipulation and deception. We have reconciliation. We have third party distraction, karmic partner. Listening and understanding, new perspective. True love and abundance now flows to you naturally and effortlessly as a result of your open-mindedness your faith and your bravery confusion and uncertainty sense of belonging home safe space apology and regret mental instability Make your move, green light. So there's two different stories here. This is either you or your person. If this is your energy group, that is. It's you or your person. So for some of you, this is saying, if you have new love that's either just come in or coming in, do not sabotage it for a toxic ex. If you have a toxic ex, maybe there was someone that you were in love with very deeply for a long time, you had a hard time letting them go, and they were very mentally unstable, they might have gaslit you, they might have just, you know, very just very toxic, and now that you're in a third party relationship, they, they want to weasel their way back in, they, they notice that you're not giving them as much attention, it's almost like they're like an energy vampire, um, and so like I said, two different stories, so this is the first story where your spirit guides are basically just telling you, you know, focus on on this new perspective, on this new life that you're wanting. Focus on this new love that you're wanting. Don't go back to your old ways. If you have a new healthy partnership, someone that's, you know, loyal, caring, don't sabotage it for a toxic ex because you might have a toxic ex weasel their way back in and make these promises to you that you just were not expecting. It's like you're you're in this relationship or you're getting to know this person, this new person, and it's it's a little unfamiliar, you know, because it's it's not um it just it's just like not familiar, you know what I mean? It's like it with familiar relationships, um sometimes it's like you can become codependent because it kind of starts feeling like home to it to a degree. And so it's basically saying, you know, you, you have to go through that phase of getting of, you know, not small talk, but, you know, getting to know each other, finding out about each other. And I think it's just saying, you know, for those of you that are, are getting to know someone new, have the patience for that. Um, and don't, you know, don't just rush into things like really have the patience for it. Go at it, you know, match their energy, go at it at a steady pace. And if you have this ex pop in unexpectedly, don't throw it all away just because it's, you know, passionate and chaotic and familiar to you and, you know, easier than getting to know someone new all over and, and risking the pain. Because I think you'll regret letting this other person go. Even if you guys don't know each other that well yet and you're just getting to know each other, I think that you have a good feeling about it. So if you let them go and you go back to this old pattern with this toxic ex... I think you're going to regret it because I think that you're going to be convinced that the ex has changed. I think that the ex is going to lie to you and try to manipulate you and gaslight you and deceive you. And you're going to, you know, kind of be convinced that the ex has actually changed. You know, they might make promises to go to counseling or do this, do that. And your spirit guides are basically just saying, you know, it's deception, it's manipulative. You, you know, take, you need to take the blindfold off. Don't just, you know, listen to what you want to hear. Um, you really need to be honest with yourself about this because I, I think, 
I think they're just going to, you know, whisper in your ear and make these promises. And I think it's going to be unexpected. For a lot of you, I think it's going to be like a sudden message that you didn't expect. Your ex just pops up and, you know, promises you the world and just begs for you back. And it might be hard not to fall back into that old pattern, but you really need to be strong. And, you know, stay loyal to this, even if it's new, even if it, you know, takes some time to get to know them. Um, it's it's healthier, it's more stable, and I, th I think there's more potential here long term, and I think that you intuitively know that. Um, I know it's just sometimes it's just hard to build with someone new, but you know the the your spirit guides, and like I said, there's two stories, so I'm about to wrap up the first one, and I want to tell you the second story, but for the first story, it just kind of feels like your spirit guides are just letting you know like this person really has not changed, like it's. It's going to be the same manipulation, gaslighting, toxicity as it was before. They're just panicking because they maybe they saw you with this new person or they maybe someone told them when you're with someone else or maybe they just telepathic, like you guys have this telepathic connection and they can feel that you're with someone else. Um, so it feels like they're trying to manifest this reconciliation, but it's like there's this third party, so it's like, nope, they can't. They're, they're blocked. See, it's like this person's blocking them right here. But it's just letting you know, like, you know, it's because you might get in your head. You might get confused and uncertain and really get in your head about it and think like, well, what if they did get counseling? What if they did do this? What if they did change? Do they mean it? Are they really sorry? Like, is this apology real? Like, because this, you know, this does feel like home to me. This does feel like my, you know, my safe space where I belong. Um, and so you might kind of get in your head about it a little bit, but you need to be logical here. And you need to realize it's going to be the same thing as before. They're, they're just, they're panicking because they're losing you. That doesn't mean that they've changed, you know? They're going to, if they have abandonment issues and they have, like, mental illness particularly, like, it's, you know, because certain mental illnesses um, are connected to very deep-rooted abandonment issues, and so that, that might be triggered here when they see you with someone else. They might, you know, offer you the world. They might lie to you. They might lie to you and promise to go to promise to do this, promise to, you know, we'll go to couples counseling. I'll, I'll get on med medication. I'll, um, I won't cheat on you again, you know, just yada, yada. And you need to be logical and you need to not give in to your emotions in that moment. And you need to, to, not have that grass the grass is greener on the other side mentality you really need to be honest with yourself um don't romanticize it really think about how bad it was when you were with this person and realize that it would it would go back to that again you might be in the honeymoon phase with them for a month if you guys got back together like you guys would be so glad to, to be back together but then the the abuse or the toxicity or the the one-sidedness that energy would come back in and you'd be stuck on that merry-go-round, that same old cycle again and again and again. And then, yeah, when you pull away, they'll, they'll miss you. They'll regret taking you for granted and try to pull you back in. But once they have you, it just, it's going to be the same routine. And you need to break that for good. Um, so I do feel like this person has a lot of instabilities. And it's like you need to be careful not to give in to your passion here. Um, so it's, it's basically saying like, be strong, you know, be strong, get your closure, block them if you need to. If this person is toxic, block them if you need to do what you need to do, but don't fall back into that old unhealthy pattern. Don't believe this person's lies and manipulation. You see, it's like this person's wearing, see this energy, like almost like a mask, like there, there's something hidden here that you're not seeing. So you need to be logical and be honest with yourself about what it was like being with them and about how how toxic it really was, you know, don't brush it under the rug. Cause a lot of people, when they're in a, a negative relationship, it's almost like they kind of, they make excuses. It's like, Oh, like he or she didn't mean, they didn't mean it like that. Or they didn't mean to say it that way. Or they didn't mean to, um, you know, grab me like that or whatever, whatever this, this situation might be. It's like, you kind of, it's like they kind of gaslight you and you kind of let them sometimes, you know what I mean? So it's kind of saying like, stay a few steps ahead here. Um, don't fall back into these old patterns, like really be logical and be honest with yourself about this person when this comes in. And like I said, this is either your story or it isn't like, don't try to make it fit if it doesn't fit. But, um, that is story number one. Story number two, I feel 
is that this might be your true love. This might be your person that's going through this with the karmic where they might have someone and this might just be to kind of let you know that there is that you know what you're what you're channeling what you're feeling is real like you might need to be kind of a few steps ahead of the karmic because they might be very manipulative very deceptive and they might be they might be pretending like they want to be friends with you like they're totally okay with this new relationship or they might be um even doing some some darker magic behind the scenes, possibly for some, for some, not for most of you, but for some of you, for a few of you. And that's not something to panic about. I mean, you can do uncrossing work, you can do protection work, like you'll be okay. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Like I've, I've had so many people hex me and it, it doesn't even phase me at this point. I just, I send it back to them and shield myself. Like it's an uncross myself. So it's, it's not, it's not something to panic about if you do, or if you are one of the few people that are in this situation where you have a karmic doing black magic, um, just, you know, fear, fear is the worst thing. Cause then it feeds it. So it's like, just know your strength and your power and do the uncrossing work to cleanse yourself of that. Um, like a candle or an uncrossing bath, um, protection. You can also do reversing if you want to get into that, but some people just prefer to do uncrossing and protection and just move on. Um, which I mean, you know, just, I'm, I'm just saying, listen to your intuition here. Cause for some, there's this karmic that's trying to reconcile with your person. You're already together. You're already like, or you're about to be together or you're talking to them at least. And you know that this is, this is real and they know it too. And this karmic is trying to be manipulative and deceptive. Um, it could be a, like a lesbian or bisexual relationship here too, for some of you. But I feel like this, yeah, like this person is just trying to deceive. This person's trying to reconcile with your person. This person's trying to make promises to them, kind of behind your back. Like they might, like I said, some of them might be trying to be friendly with you, but like behind the scenes, they're really trying to get with your person. But I think that, that your person has this listening and understanding, like this new perspective. So I think that they know better. Um, I just think that there's some drama with the karmic to kind of be aware of here. That, you know, it's like their, their home is going to be with you. It is with you. And this karmic might, you know, come through with this apology, this regret. But it's, it's the same story as before. Um, so it's, it's kind of like whether it's you or your person dealing with this, there's just kind of a warning here about a toxic ex. Either yours, your, your true love's toxic ex or your toxic ex. And, you know, that happens sometimes because especially if you haven't cut the cords, like typically when you are done in a relationship, like if it's over, over for real, you want to cut those cords so you're not energetically picking up on that person's energy and vice versa. So if you have all these cords attached to you that you haven't cut, you know, it makes sense. Like you get in a new relationship and you're happy and you feel like there's potential here. Your ex is going to feel that they have that cord, especially if they're a psychic vampire, they're going to keep using that cord to, to tap into your energy. And those cords need to be cut. Um, you can go back. I actually did a ritual where I did a cord cutting spell. This was like a few months or like probably four, three or four months ago, but it is back in my videos if you look for it and I, I show you how to do it and you can do it along with me with a candle. But, um, but anyway, for some of you, those cords really do need to be cut. It's like you're just... It's like this person might still be feeding on your energy. And like I said, when this if this person... If this is you and your person comes in, you need to be logical because they're, don't be in denial. Don't say like, like, don't, don't convince yourself to give them another chance. Don't feel obligated or feel sorry for them and give them another chance. You know what I mean? Like you need to really be honest with yourself here about how abusive it was, how toxic it was, how emotionally unavailable it was, whatever, how, you know, how that line, how lines were crossed and how that you can't go back from that. You know what I mean? Like whatever the situation was for you, just be honest with yourself. Um, and if this is your person that's dealing with this, it's just kind of saying like, you know, be mindful that the karmic is still trying to weasel their way back in. Like they might be pretending like they're not, they might try to kind of, you know, hide and hide out and, and 
you know, pretend like everything's cool, but they are still trying to weasel their way back in. And if you'd like a private reading, my email is below in the description box, right below this video. Um, any donations are appreciated as well. My donation links are below, and please subscribe if this resonates with you. Okay, we've got truth and clarity. We've got vulnerability, receptivity, sadness, cold, guarded, distrusting. There's a couple different messages here because, again, there's two groups here. For some, there's a truth coming out about a, a relationship, like something like the cat's coming out of the bag pretty much, and it's going to cause a lot of sadness to, I think, to your, to, um, the karmic is what I'm feeling if that's, if it's just your person dealing with it. So there might be some drama there. For others, I feel like, I feel like you need to accept the truth about a situation. You need to allow that vulnerability and allow that pain to just come through and allow yourself to realize that, yes, you were betrayed. Yes, you, it did break your heart. It did cause trust issues, but you need to acknowledge it and acknowledge that you deserve better at this point, you know. But I think the main purpose of this, of this, this spread for you guys is just kind of letting you know, like, to expect the unexpected, basically. Stagnation, sex, seduction, taking it slow, pulling. Yeah, someone's trying to seduce someone here. Someone's toxic. There's some red flags, some hidden motives here. Someone's trying to seduce someone is what I'm feeling. New love, submissive, weak-willed, anger, miscommunication, trapped, blocked, tied up. I feel like someone is taking the risk for new love. Like they're getting past the anger and the miscommunication and the blocks. And they're, they're making a bold gesture, choosing love over fear for this, for this new love, for this... Um, you know, I, th I think that I think ultimately, whether it's you making the choice or, or your person making the choice, I think ultimately, even though it might be unfamiliar, um, you you know that this is healthier and more stable and, and more long term than the toxic ex is, or they know, you know, they might be the one that's dealing with the toxic karmic trying to weasel their way back in. But I think ultimately, they know that this new love is what's right for them. Yeah, the ex just made them feel isolated and alone. Or you. It made you or them feel isolated, alone, empty. It was just a power struggle. It's, you know, one person chasing, one person running. Um, it's like you guys were never on the same page. A lot of pride and stubbornness. It's like you used your magic and manifestation and intention and power to manifest. Because it's like you wanted something passionate and romantic. And you can have that with this new love, but it's going to develop in a different way than it did with your ex. Where it's like, this is going to be more, um, like it might take longer to get there. And some of you might be kind of almost like, not bored, but it's like, it's just more healthy. It's more stable. It's not as, it's not as codependent and toxic and crazy. But the passion and the romance, I think, will develop here. But it's just going to be more natural. It's going to happen over time. Like, as you guys get to know each other, your bond is going to deepen. And that passion is going to come up. So it's just kind of saying, even if it's unfamiliar, you really should... You should wait it out, even if it's not what you're used to, basically. Like, you should keep going with this. Like, you you know intuitively that your ex is not going to change. Or your person knows that. You know what I mean? So I think, yeah, it's going to be the same drama with the ex. Betrayal, jealousy, conflict. And the divine is intervening. You know, synchronicity, divine intervention. The divine is inter intervening. It could be little kitty spirit guides, too. Um, intervening to um, protect either you from your ex or protect your true love from their ex because your happiness your warmth your light is here you know even if you're not used to it or they're not used to it this is this is true love here you know this is like long-term like potential marriage long-term commitment and you might have mixed feelings at first because it might not be familiar. You might be used to the ex. You might be used, you might have some subconscious addiction to the, 
to the drama and the chaos and all that energy. It might be like to you, and it's like almost like to some of you, it might feel like that's what, you know, that's passion to you. And you're going to have a new definition of passion being with this new person. It's like you're going to kind of change your old patterns, but you have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone and continue on this path. So um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, like I said, if you want to read reading, just email me. My email is right below. Um, donations are appreciated. And please subscribe if this resonates with you. Thank you guys for watching.